talking pretty fast because we only have 15 minutes and I've got 21 slides. Uh, so quick, who am I? I am a husband, hacker, veteran, gamer, sports fan, animal dad. We've got five animals. We're pushing city limits, maybe over it, not sure. Uh, former accountant turned security geek. I am day-to-day -day a senior security engineer at IC Synergy and a business owner at TCM Security. I've got two projects. One is VetSec, which I'm repping today. Uh, so VetSec is a organization for current and former military members uh, that are focused or interested in cybersecurity. Uh, we have close to 1,000 people right now. We are a registered nonprofit. And if you are interested, it doesn't matter what country you served in or if you're still serving, if you're interested in, in checking us out, uh, veteransec.com, good place to come network with, uh, with a bunch of people, you know, find jobs, resume reviews, or just, you know, talk shop. Uh, other project is the Cyber Mentor, which is my YouTube personality slash Twitch personality. I make YouTube videos based on penetration testing and ethical hacking mostly. Um, if you're interested in that kind of content, there's a 15-hour course out there right now on how to do network penetration testing. Uh, so if you want to find me after this, Twitch, YouTube, Twitter, all the Cyber Mentor, my blog, veteransec.com or tcm-sec.com. So why this talk? Uh, so we're going to cover the lessons I've learned in the past year as a cybersecurity mentor and also uh, to raise awareness about you know, uh, the resources that are actually out there. If you want to be a mentor, some of these things uh, could be valuable to you as well. And of course, free ticket to Wild West Hacking Fest, which is, I think, the most important. And then quick notes, please hold questions until the end. If you want a sticker, I've got stickers. So lesson one, there are right ways and wrong ways to approach a mentor. So in my experience over the past year, there are two types of people that I see uh, seeking mentorship. There are those that are looking for guidance, and then those that are looking for handouts. And we're going to take a look at some examples and play a little guessing game here. Uh, so if you want to engage a mentor, and you're going to see in some of these examples, your questions to your mentor should be engaging. They should not easily be found on Google. If it's a Google question, I'm going to say, go Google that. Uh, and they should relate to your experience or your mentor's experience as best as possible, because that's the steps they've been through and that they could easily relate to. So let's see some quick examples. So I'll skip the little bit, the hello, and then towards the middle here it says, what are your recommendations after the EJPT student course? I was thinking about PTP and OSCP, but Right now, I'm quite short with money, and I need to save time for the courses. In the meantime, I've registered for Hack the Box, and I'm learning there. So do we think this is a good question, bad question? Good. good question. So what I like here is that they've done their research. You could tell that they've been on Google. They've already taken a certification. This is all geared towards pen testing. Uh, and they already know the next steps. They know that the PTP's out there. They know the OCP's out there. And they're coming to me because I have certifications. I could guide them. I've been in, this, in their position before, and I could help them take the next step. On top of that, again, I see they do the research because they know about Hack the Box. They're not saying, hey, please give me all the answers. They just need a little bit of guidance. So I, I would answer this kind of question. <laughs> Number two, <laughs> hello, sir, yelling at me. I want to be a web pen tester. Please guide me. Bad question. Does it really need a lot of uh, explanation? But I would honestly, I probably get 50 to 100 emails a week. 75% are kind of in this category. A uh, lot of people wanting handouts, not a lot of people wanting guidance. So another one, I'll jump right into it. I'm about to land my first job as a penetration tester. Do you have any tips or things you wish you would have done differently when you first started? Also, has there ever been a time we didn't find anything in a test? These are questions people ask, and you're really not gonna find this on Google. This is something that only somebody with experience who's been through it before can really guide you. So this is a perfect question, good question, to ask to a mentor. And then the other type of handouts that I see. Uh, so I've applied for the SYNAC Red Team, my technical assessment stage is soon, seeking your tips and how the exam looks like. So somebody wanting exam questions, exam answers. Um, again, handouts. So uh, don't be this person. Don't be the, the Google question people. So lesson two that I've learned is cybersecurity is not for everybody. So cybersecurity is a sexy field. Pen testing is a sexy field. You get to be a hacker and get paid to do it. Uh, the reality is we are a special group of people. We never stop learning. We have this drive that 
we always want to learn something new. Day to day, there's a new exploit or a new defense, and we have to learn how to bypass it or utilize that new exploit. And the field is always changing. So the mindset of an attacker, and same thing with all cybersecurity fields, is that you have to be constantly learning or you're going to get left behind. And I see a lot of people that get interested in cybersecurity, but they actually bail when they see the effort required for success. Uh, so if you want to be successful, you know, we can't teach passion or drive as a mentor. We can guide you, but there's no way we can teach that stuff. Uh, so if you're looking to be successful in this field, you got to be passionate about it. you got to be inquisitive, and you should always be seeking guidance and not seeking handouts. Lesson three, mentorship is rewarding and exhausting. So helping others break into the field is awesome. They're, my favorite story is I had a guy that approached me. He was a senior in a uh, pretty top college uh, computer science guy. And he did not know pen testing, but he wanted to get into pen testing. So he would email me. He would say, look, here's X, Y, Z that I've done. I really need help learning you know, maybe Kali Linux or how to utilize some tools. I would give him resources. I wouldn't hear from him in a month. He'd come back. He'd say, hey, look, I've done all this. What's the next thing I need to do? Not a handout, just wanting guidance, putting the effort in on his own. Uh, from there, he landed a job at a, when he graduated, a top pen testing firm. I'm actually really jealous because it was one of my dream jobs when I first got into pen testing. So uh, super awesome for him. Uh, the other side of it is that it's impossible to help everybody. Uh, as somebody that's got some recognition in the field, I get a lot of emails. And there's just no way that I can respond to all the emails, especially like the, the better the email, the more thought out, the less handout you are, the more likely I am to reply. Um, but at the same time, even if there were 100 good emails, it would be really hard for a lot of us to reply to these. Uh, so the, the things that we can do as people who want to be mentors and help others is we can do content creation. We can make a blog, make YouTube videos, do streaming, you know, whatever it is. Again, it doesn't have to be a reinvention of the wheel. You can do something that people have done before and put your spin on it. Um, just to relay your experience to other people is super important, super useful to those looking to get in the field. And you might be able to help others in a larger setting just by putting that content out there uh, as opposed to that one-on-one -on -one mentorship. And lastly, there are amazing resources out there. Uh, so first shout out goes to Tanya Jenka. Her, uh, her Twitter handle is SheHacksPurple. So she does something called a Mentor Monday. Uh, so if you look for her on Monday, she starts a thread, who's looking for a mentor, and she links people up who are willing to be a mentor and people who are looking for a mentorship. So really, really good resource. Uh, Chloe Mesdagi is another great resource. She does a lot of things for women. So if you're a woman or know a woman looking to break into cybersecurity, uh, you could easily DM her, reach out to her. She does a lot of uh, uh, women-related activities for cybersecurity. So another amazing resource. And lastly, um, great Discord and Slack channels. These are where I would prefer and point people. So any of these on the list are amazing. Uh, there are anywhere from three to six or 7,000 in some of these. Uh, so yeah, do take pictures if you want them. I, the, the thing about the Discord and Slack channels is that they really help you learn from others. There's a chance that there's absolutely somebody out there in the same position that you are in right now or somebody that's already learning. And that also gives you the ability to help somebody else out. Uh, so basic questions come along all the time that you might know how to answer. And then you might have a question that somebody else answers. And this, these groups, these Slack channels, Discord channels are really for helping everybody out. Uh, so fantastic resources and a good way to help everybody in mass. Lastly, if you are not a mentor, please consider doing it. We don't have enough people doing it now. Um, you know, again, it doesn't have to be one-on-one. -on -one. It could just be as simple as joining a Discord channel and, and answering a question from one, one question a week. That could be your contribution to the community. It doesn't have to be anything crazy just to help somebody else out. Questions? All right, thank you.